there. And uh, we're going to look at supernatural revelation. Because sometimes you've got situations in your life or problems in your life or things that you just need to reveal. You know, yesterday when we were broke down and, I mean, it was crazy, traffic jams and, you know, we needed a revelation. It was one thing to get it boosted, but we still needed to figure out why is this happening and how can we prevent this from happening again. And, of course, the good news is um, I had had the truck undercoated and the, the positive terminal was actually loose because there was so much grease around the battery it had actually seeped in and, and made that connection a little bit loose. And so Mark adjusted that and away we go. And therefore we got to travel home last night. Simple little situation, but we needed revelation as to what the problem was. Because had we not found revelation on the problem, we could have been halfway home or we might still be there because we can't figure out what is wrong with this. There are situations in your life, whether you say, well, Pastor, I've been praying, <coughs> I've been believing God, I've been trying to find the breakthrough that I need, you know, I've got wayward kids, or I've got a wayward job or something, and you're looking to find out why is this happening to me and what can I do to change it. You need revelation. You need to know what the Spirit of God is saying. It's not enough to just say, well, you know, all things happen for a reason, because no. I liked something that I didn't post the other day just because it was a little bit too crass, but sometimes, here's the deal, sometimes we make bad decisions and we get bad results, and it's our fault, and we don't need to blame God, okay? Uh, the Spirit of God on the inside of us is telling us all the time to make good decisions. What is the right way? The Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to everyone liberally. He's not, that means overflow. That means more than enough. God is not trying to hide things from you. He's trying to get things to you. And so we see here that it says that, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of Him or in Him. Okay, you are in Christ. But He would give you supernatural wisdom and revelation. Now, I, I'm... Just touching on this book, it's an amazing book called Sparkling Gems from the Greek. And it says, would you like to receive guidance from the Holy Spirit and, ma and make some important decision today? If so, Paul's prayer is for you. The word wisdom in this word, in the, sorry, in this verse is the Greek word sophias. It's an old Greek word that was used to describe insight or wisdom not naturally attained. Not naturally attained. Now you need to think about that because in your life, if you're looking for wisdom, now there may be, you know, when, when, when Mark began to problem solve the battery, we weren't laying on the ground fasting and having our eyes rolled in the back of our heads, praying in the Holy Ghost, trying to find out what is wrong. But maybe through wisdom of natural occurrence where, you know, you check this or you check that, you wiggle things, you, you make sure things are the way they should be. And if they're not, then if you've got any kind of mechanical inclination, you can find a problem. But you might be able to do that on many things, such as we did last night, because honestly, I don't believe it was divine intervention, but Mark had some wisdom, okay? There might be things in your life that you say, it's not a matter of having the wisdom, I need divine intervention. I need divine intervention where I am looking to have supernatural wisdom, whether it's supernatural increase or supernatural finances or supernatural health or supernatural healing. You are needing something that was not there before. It was not something that you could just cultivate and make happen. And so we see here, it's not natural human wisdom. It's special insight. The word for revelation is the word apocalypse, apocalypse. It's referring to something that has been veiled or hidden for a long time and suddenly almost instantaneously becomes clear and visible to the mind or to the eye. It's like pulling a curtain back so you can see the, what has always been there but has been covered up or outside. The scene has been there for you to enjoy, but the curtains have blocked your ability to see the real picture. And when that curtain is drawn apart, you suddenly see what's been hidden from your view. The moment you see beyond the curtain for the first time, you observe what's been there all along, but not evident to you. That is what the Bible calls a revelation. So that would be like um, if you were going through some severe marriage problems, and you don't know what to do, and you've been to counselor, and you've been to this, and you've been to that. The bottom line is you need divine intervention. You need a, a somebody to pull away that curtain to say, that has been there all the time. 
There's a hot tub out on the other side of this curtain here, and so oftentimes we'll draw it just so you don't see all the people climbing in and out of there in the summertime if we're preaching. We'll draw those drapes, so that, but they're always there. They're on the other side of that curtain, if you would. That, that The people are out there, and that stuff is always going on. Okay? But we don't see it because the curtain is drawn. There may be a curtain drawn in your life that somehow the Holy Spirit needs to open up to you and say, this is the problem. It could be, you know, you ever met somebody that's just got this huge chip on their shoulder? I mean, we've been talking about offense, and maybe the Holy Spirit will bring you revelation knowledge to pull that curtain back and say, you know what, maybe there was a situation years ago, or maybe there was something that, you know, I said to you a long time ago, and suddenly the Holy Spirit reveals it to you in the nighttime, and you kind of go, wow. I could talk to them about that. That might pull a whole veil open and they'll go, oh man, God obviously showed you that because that's why you've had you know, some, some problems in your life. Maybe you haven't been getting along with others. Maybe there's something that you're doing constantly that you go, hmm, I need the veil open on that because I'm not getting the right results. Maybe you've uh, run into somebody that's always oppositional. Well, maybe they're carrying a hurt or something that, that has caused them to just sort of be weighed down. And they don't know how to get out from underneath them. Understand this. Most people in their lives do not get out of bed hoping to go and make everybody else's day miserable. They don't. Most don't. But there might be situations where you go, boy, they sure seem to have a trail behind them. Well, maybe there needs to be some revelation knowledge. The thing you've got to be careful about as I preach this is you're not meant to be the sheriff. You maybe need to pray in the Holy Ghost for other people and believe that, number one, God will reveal things to you in your life and say, hey, maybe I'm the problem here. Are you the problem or are you the solution? And so God can reveal that or pull the veil away and show you that and bring some pretty awesome breakthrough in your life because it starts with you. Don't try and sort of correct everybody else and go, I'm going to make them all better. No, you need to begin to allow the Lord to reveal to you what will make you better. And as you do that, you'll see change. One of the things that we saw in our Bible study on, on, uh, at, at Rogers is just in, in communication was that if you begin to make the change in your life of who you are in Jesus and allow your life to become what God has created you to be, God will use you to be a blessing to other people. You've got to think of it this way. Every single day you've got opportunity to move someone forward or move someone back. Are you willing to let the veil be drawn on you? Are you willing to let God reveal? Maybe you need to take a look at your heart. Maybe you need to take a look at your motive and begin to say, Hey, am I going to let the Holy Spirit guide me or direct me? But I don't want to miss the fact that God was offering here supernatural wisdom. You need supernatural wisdom. It's not always just the nuts and bolts of what goes on because there's a thousand things in life that just go on. But maybe there's something that you keep coming up against this all of the time. And, you know, we would say maybe God's trying to show you something that he can work through you, okay? There's a phrase that people use that says if God brings you to it, he will bring you through it. Number one, I don't believe that God is the cause of bad things. Sometimes we're the cause of bad things. But God can bring you to it. And God can find a way to bring you through it if you'll allow supernatural wisdom to change your life. You could look at it as simply, something as simple as tithing. You could come up with nine reasons and say, well, I don't want to give. It's just I'm just tired of it. And I don't think they, whatever, they don't use the money right or whatever you want to come up with in your mind. The bottom line is the Bible says that that can become a blessing blocker. And so if God wanted to reveal something, he would show you and say, this can be a blessing blocker in your life. One of the classic ones, oh, how come my life, I, I just can't seem to get any kind of divine healing, or I'm just always sick, or something's bad. Maybe you need to check your heart and say, are you harboring unforgiveness? Are you harboring something in your life that says, I'm better than that person? And the problem is, you are veiling the revelation that God has for you, which is Jesus, which is healing, which is fullness, which is everything that God has. But you maybe need to get quiet before the Lord, and say, Lord, examine my heart. Show me those areas that I'm missing. It's one thing to talk about offense. It's one thing to talk about people that have offended you. But you've got to begin to stop and say, wait a minute here. Am I looking to be a blessing or am I looking to be a curse? And so we see that. Now, but you need to get God kind of wisdom on stuff because that's just sort of a freebie. But sometimes in our lives when we want to see these big divine changes, the question is, are you willing to change? So many people aren't willing to change. You ever met somebody that they're the same 95 years later as they were 95 years earlier? They just haven't changed an inch because they've refused to ever look at the veil and say, God, 
reveal to me those areas of my life that I can bring change. Reveal to me those areas, those divine wisdom areas, and you'll find life will turn around, if you will. It's not just about getting your car jump-started, right? I mean, you could go off on that on nine different sermons and say, well, there wasn't enough, you know, there's enough power in the battery, but it wasn't getting to where it should. There's enough power in God, but it's not getting to where it should because there was a disconnect, okay? In your life, is there a disconnect? In your life, is there a disconnect in your prayer life? It, I'll tell you one thing right now. It does no good to read 19 chapters a day and pray in the Holy Ghost 15 hours a day if you've got unforgiveness in your heart. You might as well quit. Go drink a Pepsi and have a chocolate bar. Do whatever you're going to do because it's better off than wasting all your time seeming religious because religion won't get you anywhere. So examine your heart. And we'll do that soon. Go with me, please, to Genesis 22, too. I want to go into the Old Testament look at somebody that needed a couple of people that needed to get some wisdom on what was going on. All right? <clears throat> Now, we're going to go to verse or chapter 22, and we're going to look at a situation here where somebody needed to have divine wisdom from God. Because I don't know about you, if I was asked this question, I don't know that I would have answered it the same way. Okay, I'd like to. Chapter 22 of Genesis, verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass, after these things, that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, in whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering, and on one of the mountains which I shall tell you. First of all, I like the first part, is when God calls his name, he says, Here I am. Sometimes we can get so busy in our lives that we don't have, we wouldn't know if God was calling us, or if it was the sheriff, or if it was whoever, Foghorn. I mean, it was just, you know, you need to begin to let your spirit settle and be attentive to when God is calling you to do something. When God wants to call your name, you need to be, say, you need to be able to say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. And so we see here that he said, here I am. And he said, take now your son, your only son. How many know that when God begins to ask you to do something, God is not looking to get something from you. He's looking to get something to you. You've got to think of it this way. Because had he had a poverty broke, glass half full, bottom cut off the jug mentality and said, God can't do anything for me. He first of all knew a promise that said all of the descendants were going to come through his son. He knew that God's blessing was going to come through his son. And now God was seemingly asking for his son. So one of two things he's got to recognize here. First of all, he didn't have the revelation that we have, which is the mystery of Christ in us, or the Holy Spirit upon us that will give you divine wisdom and tell you what God is saying. But he knew the promise of God. So here's the deal. You need to know the promise of God for your life so that you can answer God yes in whatever he asks you to do. I used to be always afraid of the mission field. Oh, I can't go on the mission field. God's going to ask me to live in a mud hut and, 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 and eat really skinny animals and do all this kind of weird stuff. That is not for me. Well, how many know God created me for a reason? And so if God was to ever ask that, I need to know that God would make all provisions so that I would enjoy walking in God's plan for my life. Okay, so when you get afraid to follow God, understand this. He's not taking you to a cliff. He's taking you to a promised land. He's taking you to a land that's full of milk and honey. Here we see here, he says, I want you to take your only son. So the poverty mentality says, oh, God's trying to get all this stuff from me. No, no, no. God was beginning to take this man to a place of faith so that he could begin to see mountains move and as many as the descendants is on the seashore and say, this is what I have for you. But it took him believing by faith that when the veil was pulled back and God said, I want your only son. So let's see his response here. Take now your only son who you love. So, so you know, here, here we read this and we go, okay, nice God. He's trying to take his only kid. He's trying to take the son that he loves. He's trying to take that from him. And he's trying to just wreck his life. That's not true. We're going to see the response there. It, it brings me great. You want to know what brings me some really cool joy? And we'll do it for Hannah as well. But I love the look on my daughter's face when, when she goes out to her truck and she sees that fuel gauge move <laughs> way over, over into the F side instead of the E side. All right? I love the look of, of excitement in her face because she works hard. She works hard at serving tables and just making ends meet. And it blesses me to do that. Well, the Bible says if you being evil 
know how to good, give good gifts to your children? How much more does God want to do? So what parent doesn't take great delight in, you could do the same, Mom, but 